the agenda, we are Africans. I go go build a South Africa. We are Africans. That's called concern go preserve a South Africa or no go advance our interests as South Africans. The Africans, he focus as who build our Africa has been sitting in the Ben Kuti. The South Africa was constructed at Germany, the Europeans, as a European entity to advance a white supremacist agenda in the white, in the African world. So I wonder yet, we were not there. Our forefathers were not part and parcel of a band who decided to put Macbeth in the tour in South Africa. Even in 1910, our forefathers were not there to decide to put Macbeth in the tour in South Africa. So South Africa is something that represents death to us. It's a genocidal entity, exposed by sea destroy, because the existence of South Africa is to destroy Africa. And the Africa, the South Africa, cannot coexist because Jongoban is is South Africanness represent whiteness. Africa represents our Africanness, our blackness. So the indiet diametrically opposed. So there's no need. Hence, in our world, you cannot be an African and a South African at the same time. Because South Africa or a South African is pushing an anti-African agenda. So that's why the Sichindek Ben Kuta was a good team who represent a colonial agenda and then to represent an African agenda. Unless you're a hypocrite, someone who go honest and truthful. But if you are honest and truthful, if we are African, we are African. If we are South African, we are South African with white agenda, with a colonial or a settler neo-colonial agenda since 1994. We this settler neo-colonial arrangement in this part of the world. We are belonging to a nation. African nation, we are African nationalists about the agenda of building a nation, African nation. And African nation will rise from the ashes of South Africa. South Africa as a colonial entity must be destroyed so that Africa can rise. So, the Africans, they are existing. Umoya was Africa, we are existing. Ubuzo of Basia Africa still exist, though we are disorganized, disempowered because of the invasion of Isiswesetu. But as African people, true Igazi, Lokokobetu, Moya wa Kokobetu, it jeans, you know, as the call Naguti Zo Kokobetu, then in the Benguti Africa, he existed. Mutambi in the Gaga existing is a structure as organized the Africans since the Sayas are interrupted the times invade. But we know very well in the Benuguti it's gonna be impossible. Uguti Africa equals in the Benuguti exist as a nation so long as these colonial entities that was the countries as I exist. Part and parcel of our agenda is to destroy countries. We don't need countries because we're a nation. These countries are European construct. I know not even on itself, you know, a framework here, you know, the cultural arrangement, you know, the cultural orientation of Africans. In any of the plans, the Europeans. Hence, singer no go as us identify with the plans the invaders there too, because longer they could to commit suicide. So, South Africa, it exists as South African, the sustainers of South Africans. That's why Africa, as an entity, is organized. Inaga, inaga, inaga existing. Hence, now we Africans who are African nationalists are operating with the aim of good destroyer in South Africa so that could establish the African state. So the reason why Ingega exists as an organized structure that governs Ubo Bibaba and Ubonke Apa is because of the imposed colonial structure 
Fsiza ne institutions. As then in that bend could take over corner an illusion that there is something called South Africa and the institutions and the organs as a corner to sustain a band of bad quarter. We know Tinubuti, these are cancerous demonic institutions as a corner to perpetuate the genocide of Africans, not even to sustain the African to perpetuate the genocide, either not as the institutions as a corner in the white world. They are genocidal. They are anti-black, anti-Africans. So it really to teen as African people in this time of being colonized people is to be anti-colonial in orientation and also in action. So that you can destroy now these colonial entities and establish or re-establish our African governance. In Africa or in the African world or in the black world, there's no independent state. The Africans are Fumana, anything to our independence. That thing is is something all no good is so-called independence. Because Abanya Bandu by define as independence. Serving interest in interest. So 1957, Abo Ngruma, a Zangeba gain independence because Kwabakona it transfer of your roles within the very same administration, your colonial your colonizers. So Zango Kwabakoni destruction of colonialism a Ghana, even in the African world. Instead, even in Amkanji, we are still dominated by the very same colonizers. Our interests are still dominated by the interests of e-colonizers. So the only thing against the in the African world is to transfer e role your administrators, their managers, from the white face with blue eyes to a black man. You see? But fundamentally, the structure still remains the very same colonial structure. So these things as in the clear or as the sense why and I'm saying go pechi pechi abenziwa zini your colonialists because among us since as Africans as embrace this whiteness e Africans as is born as inferior beings we Europeans as the embrace a position of being subhuman in this life as upilayo where we function, pansy with authority, no rulership, yeah, invaders. That's the problem is now in the African world. So as is in this fun and eh, New South Africa, South Sudan, you know, as is in the as is, is in the as in the war, the Africans as is colonized, as embrace whiteness, as a, as a respect, the very same colonial laws colonial institutions that's why you can see you could think, everything in the african world governmentally ilandela the west minister parliamentary system if balande the british monarch or the british colonial administration about the colonized way friends balandela the french way or the colonized way of portuguese they follow the portuguese way so these are people about the extension of e europe about the kanga bafunuku break away from the colonial grip about the basuka instead of the reject the colonialism by embrace by normalizer and now in the bayenza yongoku they function as agents the British or the white supremacy or European imperialism. Right now, Kedong is buys within the context of ANC. We are both Ozuma, Bayavela, BCT, Abongwago, Ramatodi, you know, Yazimbimbi Zamabul. By a vedder who go to spew in yonder, as in Bimbis and Mopood, meaning Vinima de Bibale, who get in Mackenzie, a tea kills the mob by any means necessary. A be published last day. 
Ya teta mo Ralph, ongu simpuwe nyanda. Ya teta mo lunga nesbaiz within the ANC. So nza muguti. It's something he has a guy, even an exile. He has a lot of people. Even if we are members of the Black Consciousness Movement, they are some members of the ANC who are implicated, you know, of leaking information. Good guys, I guess, you know, as a guy, good to be go, a bullawe. He has a lot of Nelson Mandela being an M. I6 agent, a British intelligence agent, you know, is documented on the layer. One can even eye on the internet and check in the way, you know, your commander being a M16 agent. It is there. So, good Allah, in actual fact, Tautetang ANC, I was a book about him, after 19. Especially after 1955, you know, towards the formation of the Pan Africanist Congress of Azania, Uguti, the ANC is no longer in the ranks of liberation movement. Why? It's because also book at that time knew Uguti ANC is a white control organization, your agent is a white supremacy. So now, Kagatata, Uguti Omye, Omye, Mbimbi. Go to China, Nabani, the whole organization, the organization, the MPMP. I wonder by by part and parcel of that organization. The Bema Bandu already ever be functioning within that organization as agents of British imperialism. Babe, Abanya, Babe, the agents, the KGB, which is now. The Soviet intelligence, even Mossad, was part and parcel of Abandu because you know very well he influenced the Jews in the black world. He influenced the Jews being Abandu who owns, control the industries, control the economy, control the natural resources, or open humors. These people are part and parcel of the Jewish cabal. So, in that bar, your influence, your control, your organization, your ANC, you know, Western intelligence, that's a well, it's a well-known fact in the black world. The ANC is no longer in the ranks from the 50s. So, Tina, we are not surprised. Actually, Tina, it's not about to put Ungwako is there. Is a spy, not to Zuma, no, the whole organization, the organization MBMB. Mshandu, Gunabanda Bangel, Abangel, Nilema, Pagati, who are not aware, Ukuti Bangel, organization MBMB. Mshamba, Abiko, Abakabiko, aware even, and I'm sure Guti, Gunem Bimbi, and Apart, any organization MBMB layer. But there are people, Abayaz, the London Lay, Guti, EANC, the organization MBMB from the 50s. So as Africanists, you know the Allah says in the Ben Guti, Obumbimbi is bias the corner, especially in that organization. It's not only even with ANC Gupel, a performance corner agents, the white, the white supremacy. The whole liberation movement was infiltrated. Uguti ibe the organization and as well as the Ben Uguti, it fulfilled its historical mandate, its historical mission. Yogu liberator or Ugu assist the Africans. Uguti is liberated from the white domination, from the colonial domination. So in the bias bias within the liberation movement, PAC is one of the organizations. Zayaza infiltrator Kwakdala. Kwangelwang Apagati and even the position as for Mana Ikuyo Nanam is because of 
e operations, no machinations, the agents within the organization. Ugutis, Bekon, lose the vision, and then you be caught up with confusion. You can go with liberation movement, a mig liberation movement, the fun and the for a black consciousness movement. Its leaders, Zaza Bulaw, Babanz, Abanya, Banya, Babulaw, Abanya, Basakon, and Namshanja operating co organization, and even the agent is a second and Namshanja even within the organization. So in the Bayes buys. You know, at home, because we war. We are not the leg in the Ben Guti. Abanda by involved, we war, but apply a strategic strategies of advance. I war. Psychological warfare is part and parcel of strategy as a second soil white supremacy. So, it's biased within the organizations. A part and parcel of a band who are pushing psychological warfare so that the agents of the white supremacy who could bagwazi, who could destroy the organization from within. Gandalus means we could just abandon your poison, we could leak information which is very important with enemies. Gogu misleader Abanya Bandu within the organization. Gogu Tanga Abanya Abandu within the organization, your Mali to bring it destruction, your organization. Abanya, they are cultural agents to mislead cultural Abandu so that Abandu Baluza, their cultural base to advance the struggle. Abanya, they are in the ideological field where their focus is on ideological attack on the African ideological orientation to render the African revolutionary movement, you know, the organization, a cut up confusion, ideological confusion, who advance its historical mandate. Fumani Suguti Africans who supposed to function as Africans, now they function as anti African beings. So, this is the corner in the Baye infiltration within the liberation movement. And the end of the levels, the levels, the end of the level. And I call the ANC Gupela. You're not even in a say you're not by you even in liberation movement. But even as the Saritane, the credentials to be liberation movement, Nazo. Even an Amshanje, they are infiltrated. And the position as for Manisa Ziguyo is part and parcel of having enemy agents within. Jangoba is the organizations as in an influence with society in this time. The organization as in an impact with society in this time. The organizations as in a was which is very effective, the render its services with society in this time. Being the organization that deals with a nation building, working with a band on the ground, building with people on the ground, crying with people on the ground, tilling the soul with people on the ground, coming with programs with people on the ground, having projects. I do, you know. Agricultural project, cultural project, you know, you know, skills development, many, many initiatives. Ex suppose Guti as the Sequination Building Program. Sequence Guti seasons as building blocks towards Ugu build a nation. We suppose to have a liberation movement, a focus on building the grassroots movement. The people on the ground, but today we don't have a liberation movement in Jalo. We have a liberation movement in Jonge, Uguya in Parliament to be part of a white power structure, not of building a base, economic base, cultural base, social base, spiritual base for black people in the black communities, in the villages. We are caught up in the white fantasy because of infiltration, because of is buys the agents within. You see, so is a mukuti. The issue, you know, yeah, yeah, yes, buys it deep within 
in liberation movement because that's the most important arm your white supremacy. We struggle, we strategize against the Nazi Africans is to control in on those two so that it's a function against our interest and for their interest. That's part of a psychological warfare. The death of Umzoka Limbede. Many people, because Tatua we are in Lela, our Solegangayo. And Anton Limbede, we know very well, Kuti, Anton Limbede was one of the leaders of the Africanist movement. He, that time, was a leader. The ANC Youth League, who led, who led the youth, the youth within the revolutionary movement. Ukuti ibe kipozi shi nabo organized, and to come up a pro with, with a program that was seen by many, especially the agents of imperialism and the imperialist, as a, 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 as a program. So the program of action that was adopted by the ANC in 1949, that program of action, the program of action influences the ideas Ziga Antonium Because that was a, that was an initiative, your youth. Then the youth. Yai tata, yai push and put the elder zayos because in that when put the embrace because government the elder the best sends an ayo to represent the interests of African people. That sends an mashabo EU thing as an ayi tande because Zabandu Baguti they were begging for their freedom, begging the oppressors, begging the invaders. Uguti. Even leaders, as it is, represent the Africans. As you see, the Tata, the Queen of England, the Tata as subjects of British monarch, being servants of the British imperial crown. So, youth, you know, Yabo Limbede was. And that attitude, a project to the elders, as a beggar for the freedom, yabo, and the men that been to buy a lure by tate from those who took it away from them. So, the youth under Anton Dimberde was seen as a threat to interest the European invaders. That's why the city not been the The death of Anton Dimberde. Yaba yenye yezi ndo ifi na namshanje e kusatetuwa ayo indo ekbe nukuti Yindo eye nzoa ngabo mkumbulala Because he was representing the African vision, you know, vision He was projecting a personality Which was reflecting something He invaded as an azangas kwa azukuti zi tolerate So they had to get rid of u Antonio Mzakeli Mbede So yindo Eh, yes, why are you in the Africanist world? Ukuti, the death of Anton Limbede, you know, even Abandaba Ninzi, Abacho in Ben Ukuti, Kukona, Abandaba involved, Abenzo, Bao, Anton Amabig. Which means the infiltration, Yasele and Zagile, even that time. But Ben Ukuti, even the organization, EPAC, Ukuti ibe ku position yogu lose i members as nins assassinate lo i leaders ayo outside even inside the country zininzi apanti live na bossa belo pama inekben ukuti even ugu soleka kuwa bo opama kuwa kopeleka as even ugu soleka no bula kuga kisani within the context of the ANC. It's something against what deliberately because our band represent our interest as a 
it had to be impressed, especially the imperialists and the Africans as they embrace a neo-colonial arrangement. So, Sagal Obama is one of Abandu, Abazwa in the Benukuti. Ugu Fakwake, those Kalil in the Benukuti, I accident, but he learned the layers in the Benukuti. Uxole Bakwake is something a Kogelegayo. Ugula Uga Jafta Masamola, we take on a car accident. Still, we are the Uaba. The lion, I mean, the tiger of Azania, Uguti, why push a program? Which was a tragic interest of the imperialists and in neo colonialists, he collaborators. So they had to get rid of who Jafta Masamola. Tata Jafta, no, Uzaf Mutuben, the lion of Azania. As well, Uksolega Guake, Kunabanda Bacho in the Ben Uguti, Kukona Abandu Abenz Leguti. Who Uncle Zef because Uncle Zef was against negotiations, Uncle Zef was against collaboration. So for this neo colonial arrangement, you know, Codessa negotiations, World Trade Day, World Trade Center negotiations, you know, Nazi in negotiations as a secret, there's a banger look at those people who assassinate to pave. A way for this neo colonial arrangement. Because this arrangement, if those people were corner, because Andrew was to tell against collaboration, was to tell against being co opted into a white structure, because Andrew knew the dynamics of power. We were supposed to attain power, to have power to determine. It destined to even to determine, even if ever get negotiator, whatever negotiator are you having the power to impose whatever decision is about to see tini see kuibe na kwe ipi it desiga a political corner. You see, Angus F knew the aspect of power. That's why we are searching the Benukuti. African people must be empowered at Azania to gain the power. In all aspects, economically, socially, politically, even militarily, to have the power. Yoko Azuguti was subject to invaders. Panzi were interested in Africans. Because without that aspect of having power to make sure what the interest is, Zizo, as a server of space, then you will remain a slave. So those people were assassinated. Those people were assassinated. The system of white supremacy, but working together with collaborators within the organization. So as was in the, as was the clear and the manner that PAC, even PCM, you can go go Biko, the assassination of Ubiko, it was coming from Cape Town. Committing Yokza Mangu organizer, black organizations. But there is information that the likes of Chuck Nagula were also involved. A clicking information, a Ben Kutubigo, a Banjo, a Bula, a Ubigo. What to Akuti, Gunabanabula, Gunabana was an Abula. If he was part and parcel of his struggle, we chat in a white supremacist, you know, colonial, you know, white power structure. And then Abanya Bandu Bamba Nababaya Bulao and Abulao. So why won't we come Bulao when? You see? That's why you have to ask the questions. You know? Because as the news doesn't say guy, you have to ask this question because it doesn't make sense. Guti Abandu Abani agenda to destroy the white supremacy. Abai seven by a bulao and then abai three by a shio. Yet got to maybe push a one agenda. It had to thin along the day. So this is the as as Bonagalisa and the infiltration and also the level the operation organization, which is the PCM, the Azanin movement. Right now, it really shows when the Ben Kuti really the organization was captured, which is the Azanin movement, was captured by the enemy agents. And then they render the organization useless so that the organization and I was you could see he existed on the ground with the people, he existed 
as part and parcel of Ubomi Babandu on the ground. Not as a political organization, as a figure Banduini, you're the Telabano Mabai voters, so that some politician who is a criminal hypocrite, Maram Bayoba, I can't see Layoba, you know, you know, member of parliament. No, PAC, the Azanin movement, was organized, came into existence because of the pain, the interest of black people, Abbasas Lokshini, Abbasas Lalini, Abatinga in the Ben Kuti, Babene Vayakli to take their, their aspiration forward. As a was good builder with Abandu on the ground, black consciousness in the 70s used to have e programs, self reliance programs, beauty clinics, beauty programs, skills development. But black consciousness, Eko Nangoku, I know so self reliance programs. Self help project, if black consciousness, yes, of so what happened to that consciousness? Who invaded that consciousness and render this current consciousness useless? The way useless, you know, being a organization, a functioner, totally, you know, different black consciousness of the 70s, driving different agendas with different interests from different position your yeah, interest yeah, well. so the level of infiltration is deep even ideological even ideological because that's the aspect you yeah, could destroy your okay, as an in movement infiltration is vice and not only good organization which is about to e poison to leak information about the whereabouts of Abantu, but they are also agents, ideological agents, agents who are advancing psychological warfare. That's why even the Azanin movement, which was Africanist, you know, as an Africanist movement, which was driven by Africanism, with a pan-Africanist objective, but now, some they want to render it a democratical, liberal entity. Just something to push their democratical agenda. Some they are pushing their socialist agenda. Something that's supposed to build Africa, to build the African nation. Now they want Ugutibe in order to build the democracy, or to build the socialism, in the nationalism, under the principle of scientific socialism which they claim to be a science of a revolution so Iwanda Lendon Tetangayo is part and parcel of ideological infiltration ideas as in Ganileo in the African mind distorted the African mind falsified the African consciousness and project the African personality which is falsified, which is corrupted, which is Eurocentric, which is not in tune with the collective interest of African people. But an African or a Pan-Africanist or a Black Consciousness man who is advancing the interest of the socialist, you know, the social, socialist gang, those who belong to the to the block of the socialist, which is the Soviet bloc. So this is part and parcel of advancing the same old agenda here. Yeah. Socialist International, Fourth International, Second International, those are bodies that seek to internationalize the Russian experience, which is part and parcel of white supremacist experience. So they function socialists as extension of the European world. So even Democrats and those who are pushing illiberalism, you know. So they've raped the African mind, the African consciousness that was indigenous, original and authentic and render the African mind, Ibe, mindset, which is now reflecting something which is no longer African, but something which is colonial or neo-colonial. Rastafari is still black. 
original, though there are some, Abba embrace the spirit of non-racialism, of multiracialism, but the root, the foundation, the essence of Rastafari is black. And no one can change the foundation of Rastafari. So that's why the Sitchin that Ben It's just that it's Gabando Batilla by by Embracer. The reason why by by Embracer is because of the very same machination of enemy agents within Rastafari. Because Lendo Lena Yenzeke, because of infiltration. Because there was a time when Rastafara was black. The time Rastafara was functioning from a center of blackness, being informed by this black condition, black reality. But within the African world, within the black world, there are some of us. Abaye were infiltrator as well, ideologically, even culturally, by the European world. Remember, we are living, we are functioning within the universe, which is dominated by these vampires. So the level of their influence, Ipezu, so they have managed to influence some within Rastafari and twist their mindset. And those people, they manage to see a reality, not from a racial point of view, for which Rastafari from inception was built on. Because the ideas of Marcus Garvey, the personality of Marcus Garvey, the consciousness of Marcus Garvey, the vision of Marcus Garvey, that's why it's important in Rastafari consciousness because Gavi represent black nationalism, represent black agenda. So Rastafari from inception was black. So it's part of the ideological infiltration. It's based within Rastafari as a core in the habit of coming Abu Rastani to kill us with guns because we're not organized we are because definitely the area of of infiltrating Burasta is on cultural grounds most of the time and also on ideological grounds. That's why the move from black to something which is human or non-black or non-racial. Running away from functioning as a black being. That's part and parcel of infiltration and in actual fact, the enemy agents within Rastafari were operators of the field as. And also, the field the economy, bringing dollars, using their economic muscle for influence and all other things. Rastafari, which is supposed to function as a black fraternity, black organization, Black people's standard movement ended up a function as a non-racial entity and involved itself with talks, deals on a non-racial basis with invaders, killers, murderers of our ancestors, the very same people who are committing genocide right now and who are perpetrating a genocide, Apaguti, killing Abandes Bangaba every weekend. 
but I'm worried as to who's supposed to be functioning from a sender of driven by the people's interest, people's decision, people's mandate, black people's mandate. But now they are functioning not from a black sender, but from a non-racial sender. Ayans do it ben kuti. Bako has oxala with the very same invaders and discuss with the invaders of our motherland. The vampires, the blood suckers, talking about our resource, our natural resource, without the mandate of the black community, black nation, even without the mandate of the people who represent a black fraternity. So that's how infiltrated we are. We are rendered useless because we are younger than the Nenas and the Pesiba Zitudes, people who become agents. A crowd to be rendered during court cases, the whites, to raise the flag and support the cause, the Europeans, to eat Gosobo. Bafunu Guchangalo in this time, Besitangendo, Ekina Banda Bamyama, Ejel, Nanam Sanje. They want to eat, yet yeah, they don't talk about justice. They don't talk about the imprisonment of our sons and daughters, of our mothers and our fathers, because of the very same resource. Abba Tingoku is something. Abba Bonuguti, the resource Abba Nusebenzisa, and Enogwa Sukuti, the resource Abba Nusebenzisa, to build a nation, to heal a nation, and to secure the survival of a nation because of the capacity yeah, yo, in many aspects but justice they are no longer Amara started talking about justice truth order reciprocity no they are not into that balance of things they are not in those things they are parasites as well. They want to be blood suckers as well. To enter the grave train. To be part and parcel of the capitalistic machinery. And eat and benefit. It's about that. So that shows how infiltrated we are. We are born as Rastafari people. Because Rastafari in this time is nothing but a bunch of people who can be used by anyone with money as long as long to law a was in the woman manipulator so-called leaders who are actually dealers within Rastafari agents of the billionaires who come down and to be the voice of their masters to manipulate the one who don't suspect anything the innocent one, the illiterate one, the ignorant one within Rastafari, instead of uplifting the ignorant, the illiterate, they are using and misusing them for the aim, for the aims, for the agenda of those with money who are in actual fact the European descent. The Rastafari came into existence. The informal condition, the collective condition of black people, universally, of being enslaved, colonized, suffering from genocide, suffering from all kind of destruction. So, as a movement, a informal is a reality. It came as an embodiment of the aspirations of black people. In its manifestation, it manifested as a movement which embodies the collective aspirations of black people universally because we have a global presence. <clears throat> So Rastafari came into existence 
as a universal movement responding to the black condition. So it became a vehicle to advance the black interest in all aspects. It came into existence responding to colonialism, responding to slavery, responding to white supremacy, responding to the fact that we are suffering in our own land not in the foreign land. Tina, who are in the continent, who are in Africa, some, they are responding to the fact that they are in the foreign land. They were taken away from their foreign land. They have lost their language, their identity, their nationality, their ways, their values. They have lost their culture because they found themselves in Brazil in Trinidad, in Jamaica, in Cuba, in America. So Rastafari came to be a revolutionary movement responding to that black reality. So from that time, Rastafari was part and parcel of the black society, the black nation. Rastafari was involved in the struggle of black, of black people in the communities. Black people together with Rastafari people were together advancing the interests of the collective. In all France, in the cultural France, Rasta was there. In the educational France, Rasta was there. In the scientific front, Rasta was there as a scientist to advance the African revolution, the black struggle, the black revolution. In the military structure, Rasta was there as a warrior, as a soldier to advance the struggle. So there was no time in history when Rastafari was not part of African revolution. So Rastafari was part of African revolution. And Rastafari is still part of African Revolution. You can study the history of the PAC of Azania. You will find that some of many cadres of the PAC, Boko warriors, were Rastafari people. One time, Danding Alpayana, Erigina Mundi, with the Pupa Udon Matera. Udon Matera was the Rasta. But that time was a speaker. What's the Rasta? Let me tell you something. Because I don't see Rastafari more time now in the Africanist movement, in the Pan Africanist movement. And he said to me, even to the whole Congregation of the Africanist movement. Ukuti, you know, in the early 80s, many people, young people, who became part and parcel of Abla were Rastafari. There are many cadres, commoners of Abla who are still Rastafari, even Nanam Sanje. So there was no time. Apo Amara Sangako involved in the struggle. You can go to Grenada. It's historically known in the 70s. Good Rastafari in Grenada was involved in the struggle against the colonialists and the neo colonialists in that part of the Caribbean. It's a documented, documented fact. Good in the Naya Bingi gatherings. There is no reason about the revolution. There is no reason about how to destroy the system. In the Naya Bingi, the time of Mabandu Bebe Chanda, Bebe Chanda to uplift their irate. So that they can pull me out of the Bingi. But pull me with the immoral, the determination, the spirit, the courage to carry on with the struggle to destroy 
he sellouts, he stooges, he traitors in that part of the world. So, Amarasta is well known. Ukuti Ogo Aba involved in the struggle, in the revolution. The only thing I declare you, the infiltration I am declare you in Rastafari, within Rastafari, Ukuti, the agents outside, the Kwazilu infiltrator Iras, because there's an anti colonial movement which was getting inspiration from Imam Mao, from the Chimuranga warriors, from the Nayabingi warriors, Goma Uganda, from the Manji warriors, Goma Tanzania. So, you won't get under the Yanaya Senzeka, Gogomoya, because Rastafari is the very same anti colonial, anti revolutionary, ancestral spirit, a manifesto, a corner of the Africans who are the carriers of the genes, the memory, and the spirit of the African ancestors. We are the embodiment of our ancestors, we are the ancestral mandate. So that was ingrained Gutis Namarasta up until the enemy agents this infiltrated Zingen within Zbene agents within We are no longer Abandu Aba near Africans who are colonized. Now we have blue eye, pale skin, blonde hair, redneck, European beings within Rastafari. Functioning, claiming to be Rasta. Yet, Rastafari belongs, is a manifestation and influenced by the black Asili, which is a seed which is coming out of, black, of the black condition. So that shows the level of infiltration and also, it's no longer about infiltration. Now it's also about the level of control of Iras, of dominator, of the ruler. Now to be now a movement which is in total, in total servitude under your white domination. So it's in the right now. This is just the Galisa, the machinations of the Western intelligence, the CIA, MIC's, KGB's, the Mossad, on how they operate and how they manage to recruit within the black world. Abandu will be carriers of European and black agenda. People who will represent the whiteness who will be facilitators of a colonial or a neo-colonial machination within Rastafari because the Marasta who are non-racial are neo-colonial agents because racial consciousness is essential actually it is our heartbeat because everything is racial everything is racial we are responding to the world which is racial and we have to operate from a racial point of view, from a racial, you know, base. Because that's the only base that can guarantee us a collective security. Learn how his majesty at Tetangayo. Because without the center of blackness, Asusubanayo, a power, an authority, a space, so good germinator, so go organizer our power. So race first consciousness, race first philosophy, as it was taught by Marcus Masaya Gav, is still relevant even Nanamtanji, even Akuti in this generation. To think as a nation, to think as a member of the black collective is essential. Outside of the black world, there's no Rastafari experience. 
Because Rastafari experience is black experience. It's black reality. It's black condition. No one outside of the black race can experience, can have a little bit of a connection with the black with the black experience. So Chinese, Europeans, Arabs, whoever who claim to be Rasta or to be Rastafari is a liar. He's a crook. He's a criminal. He's a cultural expropriator. He's a culture vulture. As the Sifundi Sagutu Guti, black man, embrace yourself. Be yourself. Embrace your culture. Embrace your identity. Don't be an imitator of other races. Don't be a worshipper of other races, personality, images, and all that. We must also do the same thing to other races. This is, a, this is an issue of principle. We cannot allow Europeans to act, to behave, to imitate Africans. Because they will, rule, they will lose originality. They will lose authenticity which is a little bit of their divinity or their spirituality. Then if you promote a culture of imitators, of fraud, now you are perpetrating injustice, you are doing corruption and you are misleading the children. Rastafari cannot be Chinese. Rastafari is black. His Majesty is the King of Africa, not of human beings. He was crowned by Africans. It was African people who crowned His Majesty to be a King of Ethiopia. He's a King of Ethiopia, not King of everyone. So, African people, who are Rastafari, who surrendered their sovereignty of thieves, of infiltrators, of agents of imperialism. Those are Rastafari who have lost their blackness, their essence. That's why they will, some of those races claim that even a European can be Rasta, Chinese can be Rasta, an Indian can be Rasta because he has lost the knowledge of self. So those people are in the fantasy world. Those people are in a state of illusion because there are many people who are living in a state of illusion because that's what it has been created by the white world, a state of illusion, a state of fantasy. Because it doesn't mean when you are an imitator, you are real. Because imitators are not real. We will deal with reality. Rastafari is African reality. As African reality is black reality. We don't have any reality outside of the black world. The reality that we know, that we are connected with, is in the black world. And that reality, within the context of Rastafari, is black. We don't know Rastafari outside of blackness, you know? So those Chinese who, Im who are imitators, those people need mental help because those people have lost something which is very important for their well-being. They're supposed to be taught to be, the, to be themselves. They must be taught to embrace themselves. They must be taught to be who they're supposed to be so that we can cooperate within this universe as the nature itself has designed to be Rastaman. We don't want people to be imitators because imitators are frauds. So we don't promote fraudulent beings. So that's why we are saying there is no such a thing as a white Rasta, Chinese Rasta, 
Arab Rasta, Asian Rasta. No, there's no such a thing. Unless that one is a black being. If he's a black man in Australia who is one with black experience, who is one with black condition, which is universal, then that one is one with the heart beat, which is blackness, for which is the seed, which is the seed and germinate and produce and create the reality someone who is Rastafari. Those are the people that can identify themselves with Rastafari because of black experience. Because this thing is genetic, this thing is in blood, this thing is in, is in our historical memory, our ancestral memory that connects us with Rastafari, with this essence. It's not illusion, it's not fantasy, it's not entertainment, even religious entertainment. No, it's not about that. It's about reality, which is Rastafari. And that reality, which is Rastafari, is black reality. Because there's no reality for us outside the black reality. You know? That's why we don't have even friends outside the black race. Because everyone outside the black nation is the enemy of the black nation. Repatriation cannot manifest within the context of coloniality or neo-coloniality. So Africans who are colonized are not in the position to comprehend, not even to advance, even to comprehend African repatriation. So it's, it's a, that is an African agenda and that will manifest when African people function as Africans. So within Rastafari, we speak of, of, rep of repatriation, that African people must repatriate. But African people are not only speaking about repatriation. In actual fact, the agenda of repatriation came after the agenda of resistance, after the agenda of liberation of crying for, for freedom, for independence, for justice. Those things, th that stage, that phase, is the phase that will create a condition for repatriation to manifest. So African people were very much aware, though that program to some were, was good to mobilize African people you know, but they knew, Gav knew, that repatriation cannot happen if Africa is colonized. If Africans in Africa are still enslaved. That's why Gav was saying, in Africa, in Azania, white people must be taken out of the land. That's what Gav was saying. Gav was not saying they want to go in Africa to be part of the white community. No. God was saying Africans in Africa must, must liberate the continent and render the African space conducive for repatriation to manifest. But if the condition is not conducive, repatriation cannot manifest because immigration is not repatriation. So right now, Russia's all over, they are talking about repatriation. Those who are outside, like as we all know, that from the conference that was held in Jamaica around in the early 80s, you know, where Africans of Rastafari persuasion in the diaspora came with a program that will take them forward. And they came with 22 proposals. And according to their arrangement, according to their prioritization, 
they elevate repatriation into a higher level and they consider the repatriation to be the, their first priority. That was an agenda that was influenced, informed by the conditions of Africans who were gathering that time, who came up with those resolutions. That thing is very important and repatriation is a must and repatriation must be achieved by African people. But there is a problem also even in the discourse of repatriation that actually I find within the Africans, Rastafari, inside and even outside. The problem that I find for, for, from, from Africans who are outside of the continent, you know, is that there are who are saying they want to repatriate back to Africa, who are asking Africans right now, who are dispossessed, who are landless, who are still enslaved in the land of their forefathers to facilitate repatriation. I have a problem with those Africans outside of the continent who are expecting the agents of neo-colonialism to be the people who will be advancing the repatriation agenda. So if Africans, even Rastafari outside of the continent, must not only speak about repatriation that they want to come back home, they must understand that our home was invaded. They were taken away from home and the home of African people was emptied and the home, the home of African people was rendered powerless to resist island domination and was still dominated even today. How can they expect people who are dominated in their own space by alien to advance repatriation? That is impossible. What they're supposed to do is to complement the aspirations of Africans inside the continent because what we need inside the continent is liberation. We need liberation. We need independence. We need freedom so that we can be in total control of Africa, the land, the sea, the space, everything, so that we can also be in the position to serve the interest of the collective. But right now, Africans are serving the interests of European imperialists. So the issue of repatriation is part and parcel of the black agenda, it must manifest, but the liberation comes first. Liberation must come first because there will never be repatriation, even reparation without liberation. Liberation is a prerequisite of repatriation, reparation and restoration of the African world. Even races inside the continent, some black people and Rastafari have misdiagnosed also as well the black condition, the Rastafari condition. Maybe because of misinterpreting the real aspirations of African people. Because even within the Africa, within the continent, within Azania, we find races who are saying their first priority is repatriation. How can an African in Africa claim that his first priority, someone who's dispossessed, enslaved, domesticated, he's a squatter in the land of his and her forefathers and forefathers, be in the position of advancing repatriation. So we are caught up in fantasy we are caught up in illusion because of misinterpreting black reality, misdiagnosing our black condition, and also of, of, of puppetry, of parrotry, because races, because of we are people inside the continent that we usually 
use information, get information even from outside of the continent. Sometimes some of our Rastafari are not authentic and are not original. They even assume that the agenda of Rastafari who are outside of the continent is the same agenda of Rastafari inside the continent. And then this is very dangerous because it robs of Africans in Africa of having their own initiative. And they become parrots. Because Africans here, they read the very same 22 proposals that repatriation is the first priority and run away with that and parrot that and become advocates of repatriation while they talk nothing about liberation. They organize repatriation committees but not liberation committees. That's, that's, that's Rastafari who function outside of its historical mandate, historical mission, outside of its originality. And we need to bring ourselves back to the center. So the issue of repatriation is very important, but we inside of the continent, our responsibility on how we prioritize issues cannot be the same as those who are in the diaspora. Yes, we are one people coming from one source. We are one nation with one destiny, but we find ourselves in different condition. So there is a need for us to move from the position that we find ourselves in. So hence, the info, you know, our perception, our programs must be informed by our reality. The reality is we are still colonized, we are still landless, we are still domesticated, we are still invaded, we are still owned, controlled, ruled by aliens. We must focus on that. Destroy white supremacy. Defeat the European imperialists, the invaders. Destroy their machinery. Disarm white supremacy, control aliens in Africa, and render them powerless to be a threat to us. Then after, we'll be in the position to determine our destiny. Then, until then, the issue of repatriation will be a reality. But currently, we don't have a repatriate. We only have people who immigrated because of their individual advantages. They found themselves in Africa because of connect, because of whatever reason, but not of repatriation. Because repatriation is not something that can be institutionalized by the neo-colonialist or being manifested in a neo-colonial arrangement, that is impossible. Because we are still under Dutch Roman English law. Repatriation can only manifest and authorized, standardized under the African law, the black law, not under Dutch Roman English law. That is impossible. Anyone want to institutionalize repatriation within the context of Dutch colonial English arrangement, then that one is perpetuating colonialism in disguise. So we don't have a repatriation agenda prior before a liberation agenda. We need liberation of African people, of black people first. Freedom independence and justice for black people first before anything then repatriation reparation and restoration is possible only after liberation yes i am